Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board on December 9th, 2019 at 7.05 here at the Deerfield Town Hall. Tonight's agenda is uh, to review minutes, if we have any, of previous meetings, to review mail, if we have any, take any public comment. Uh, there are no public hearings. And then we'll take up some old business, primarily a discussion of possible changes to bylaws regarding marijuana establishments. And if we make progress on that, we'll set a public hearing date to consider those changes. And then if we have time, we'll get into discussions of uh, changes to other bylaws, including solar electric installation, lot size and shape restrictions, and accessory apartments. We'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. That sounds like a I love it. decent agenda for tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so we have a quorum. Uh, we want to just say who we are. Sure, we'll start. Sir. Kip Camosa. John Waite. Rachel Blaine. And Mary Cloutier. So that's four out of seven, so we have a, a quorum. Uh, but we do not have minutes from the previous meeting. And I'm not sure we have any new mail. Okay, that mail was received in September, so. All right, so no new mail. Is there anybody here who would like to make a comment about something that's not on the agenda? Looks like we don't. All right, so we get down to old business. So um, for several meetings now, we've talked about potential changes to bylaws, and we've... Uh, uh, enlisted the help of a, uh, a consultant on that. So Chris Curtis is here tonight. And the ones that we've talked about, marijuana establishment by law, um, solar electric, lot size and shape, and accessory apartments. I think we rank ordered these the other, the other meeting and we said that we want to look at marijuana first. Um, and we've had some input from the public as, and then Chris has done some work on this too. So. Are we ready to dive into that? Yeah, the only thing I would like to say, because we got this on such short notice, I mean, we obviously can discuss this, but I think that we should wait till our next meeting when more members are here, and we have a chance to digest it and yeah. do some research on it as well. So I guess one, one thing I'd like to start with is, um, so we have marijuana bylaws section, um, well, we have actually two. We have a medical marijuana treatment centers, 4650, and then we have 4660, which is marijuana establishments. Um, and so our goal is to, I think, to merge those two, but then also um, often we, we kind of update. We go back to our current ones and we make some minor changes here and there. But Chris, are you recommending that we kind of uh, just take because I, I we got your email and it said that these are based on um, ones that are out there in other towns and other people recommend and are they at all like how do they coincide with what we have and so how should we kind of proceed I guess tonight to try to put this together well the premise that I was using was that we would um, completely replace the existing 4650 and 4660 with a new bylaw and that was similar to the premise that um, Dick Evans also had been working with, and I was looking at his suggested um, bylaw revisions um, alongside um, some other ones that I had. Uh, I looked at um, some communities in the Valley. Goshen, for example, is the most recent that has adopted something like this. They used the same model that um, was prepared by the group of Pioneer Valley um, planners that has been used in, in a number of, of communities. Um, and this model that um, is really the basis for what I'm suggesting to you tonight was developed um, in uh, 2018. And just so you kind of have a sense of it, the people that were involved were the uh, East Hampton city planner, the Springfield director of planning, the Belcher town town planner, the Cummington planning board, um, Planners from Central Mass Regional Planning and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, 
Uh, yeah, so it was, a, it was a small working group that they set up and they created this model, which I think was really thoroughly researched and vetted with um, a number of different communities. So I feel pretty comfortable in, in recommending that to you as a basis for starting anyway. And, you know, obviously there may be things that we want to tweak and tailor, and I've um, tried to do that already um, in terms of, you know, sort of looking at how this fits for, for Deerfield and taking into consideration, um, again, the suggested changes that were provided to you by uh, Dick Evans, which, you know, there, there are some pieces of, of that work reflected here as well. I think there were some really good ideas in, in that um, recommended bylaw. Um, and I know, you know, John, you mentioned that you were concerned about the length of it. it, it it's really not so bad if you take the definitions out, I guess I would say. Right. It's, right. it's uh, two and a half pages of definitions, which can go into you know, either into the bylaw text or it could go separately into your definition section. And I think that would be maybe the best place for them and might make this a little bit more palatable in a certain way if the definitions got separated out. Um, Although it, just on that, on that note, we have been talking about make definitions. where to put definitions because sometimes they go, they, they, like a lot of these go just with this bylaw. So right. they should should be near it. And, you know, yeah, so. it's a tough call. Uh, you know. right. we, we, we talked about that not too long ago, like yeah. the idea that maybe we'd make it one place so that uh, what's a marijuana transporter in one place then comes up. Yeah. My um, recommendation is to have a single definition section in, in right. your bylaw so that in right. whatever section you're looking at, you can go to one place and know that you don't have to search for it. Right. Um, I think that's. Well, what, I mean, I haven't had a chance to study this, but right off the bat, I. The cannabis cultivation, the very first definition, changes the whole thing of what the town wanted to do. The town wanted to let farmers grow this, and now we've got it including everything right down to selling it. It's okay. processing. I mean, isn't that what Mr. Evans wanted? Uh, processing. I mean, that's not what we were, we were about. So can, can I just try to hold you off just for one second so we don't start going around? So that, that's kind of my thing is how are we going to... Um, because we, we did put a lot of thought into the marijuana bylaw that we have. Sure. And so I want to I wanna be able to hold the two next to each other and kind of make some sense out of it. So we know what we're adding and what, if we're subtracting anything. Yeah. So I don't know if you have a sense of... Well, if you, if, if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to also start out with some really basic things that the, the group, the working group, recommends you re related to this. Speaking to the mic, too, because we are on TV, oh, so just in case... Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, there's... There's a half dozen or so basic premises that, that this working group was, um, had identified as key things. And I, if, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to just kind of run through those really quickly. Um, one recommendation is that they, they recommend that marijuana cultivation be treated as an industrial use as it requires a secure and closed structure. That's, that's you know, a pretty fundamental thing in sort of response to the question that you were raising. The second is that um, communities permit adult use marijuana establishments only in specific commercial and industrial zoning districts. Third, um, that communities should adopt a limit of adult use marijuana establishments that is 20% of the town's licenses for alcoholic beverages. So the number of entities that could get mm -hmm. approved would be limited. 20%. It was 10. It was 10. We, we were functioning with a 10%, yep. which really? we thought that was um, state mandated. Um, we know. Okay. I, I'd have to go back to the state's regulations, okay. but th this group recommended 20%. I think you can you can take it or, you know, or not take that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was that. actually a little confused by that. 20% of the liquor stores the number yeah. the number of 20 percent of the number of liquor, liquor stores so if, so if you have 10 mm. of those they recommend that you limit the number of marijuana establishments to, to two and why um just to to have a, a limit so that they don't proliferate and Basically. and sort of get out of control i think is is i think the main I concern think it, i think it was assuming that we made it a coherent argument for why there should only be 10 liquor licenses you know that there was some thought put into that so that this would, yeah. would correspond to, to that somehow <laughs> i'm not sure that's 
I guess I don't understand the relationship between no, it, liquor stores and I think places it's a, to it's buy a, marijuana. It's a rule of thumb. Yeah. It's, you know, just it's totally it's arbitrary. General, uh, the it's arbitrary guideline. Pretty you know, arbitrary. Yeah. They're not totally dissimilar, so how do you decide right, how many? Right. Well, you've already made a decision about yeah. alcohol, so why don't you just tag it on with alcohol? Yeah. This is a restricted right. amount of alcohol selling places in a town, too. And the state licenses them. Okay. And, and a little background on that, too, is the state kind of came up with that by population. And if you go by population, Deerfield has an extraordinarily large amount of liquor okay. establishments for the population. Mm -hmm. They recommend um, that you restrict the gross floor area open mm -hmm. to the public to 2,500 square feet. We did have 20. We did Sorry. have 20. Sorry. Okay. They recommend a buffer uh, for any marijuana establishment. Um, and this buffer would include schools. It could potentially include daycare facilities, playgrounds, churches. That number, um, the, the group recommended 300 feet. The uh, Cannabis Control uh, Commission allows 500 feet, I mm -hmm. guess. I think Dick Evans was recommending a bigger number than that, um, if I remember correctly. But anyway, so that, that number is somewhat in flux, but a buffer certainly would be in order. They recommend that you prohibit adult use marijuana establishments proximate to residential areas. They recommend that operators provide uh, for decommissioning a decommissioning bond to the town in the event that the marijuana establishment ceases to operate. And lastly, they require they recommend requiring that the applicant applicant s submit to the planning board a provisional license from the state at the time that um, an application was made. Say the last two again, I'm sorry. Decommissioning the, the, the last two. Decommissioning bond. Bond, yeah. So that you're not, the town's not yep. left sort of holding, you know, the bag essentially mm -hmm. for like this Like we do facility. with solar. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, right. Clean it up. But I couldn't remember the bond. And then the last one was? The last one was requiring the applicant to submit to the planning board a provisional license from the state at the time of application. So those are sort of the, some of the fundamental findings that led to the, the way the bylaw was, the model bylaw was structured. I think one of the big questions, you know, for the town would be, and John asked this in his email last night, whether you want to work with your existing marijuana overlay district or you want to modify that in some fashion. Um, and I, I think that's really your call. I, I um, would sort of defer to the board on, on that, but I will say that, uh, <clears throat> again, the, the model reflects um, only allowing these facilities in commercial or industrial districts. So I tried to match that up with your existing zoning in the, uh, in the recommendations that I made. And, um, so you can see that on the second to last page, the changes to the table of use regulations. This is intended just to be kind of a, a starting point for discussion. Um, and I, you know, you could either use the existing marijuana overlay district or you could use, um, you know, uh, a, a slightly broader um, set of, of uh, districts here for some of the uses. So again, the table that I'm showing here is kind of really showing you both things. Mm -hmm. um, so um, just to, you know, John, to maybe take the questions that you had posed last night, if that if that's okay. Well, all right, but I, or do you have questions? Maybe I well, should. Well, just I say. think a lot of it has to do with the, the table of uses. It's it, it does that does actually have a, a lot to do with it because if you it's, just have a marijuana overlay district the big difference I think is that our last bylaw said that in for um, marijuana cultivation uh, could be allowed by special permit in RA uh, with with a caveat of um, that it required a special permit as well um, 
So, so I think that is a, probably one of the biggest issues right now, is do we want to change that? And I think a lot, largely because of a lot of what we've learned over the past two years is, as Skip said, a lot of the public who spoke at the last uh, um, go round of this was like, oh, we should let our farmers, you know, take advantage of this. If it's a crop they could grow, that'd be great. Um, I think what we've learned since then is that all this has grown inside. And just as you started out, it's an industrial. And it has to be a secure an facility. A business. Um, the other thing I would say from so. sort of some level of knowledge here is that the, um, the odors from these plants are incredibly strong. Um, and if you've driven around town and seen the industrial uh, hemp um, facilities that we have in town, we have s several fields that were full of those. Those were, those were stronger odors than I had imagined they would be as well, but the, the, the actual marijuana is, is much, much stronger than the industrial hemp is. And even um, we have it in the bylaws that you can't that odor is not supposed to go beyond the field, you know, the, so, the property. Right? So, it, already that's caused or could be a potential issue because if somebody sits outside of a marijuana growth facility and they can smell it, do we shut them down until they control it? If that's what the bylaw says. Okay. So, so I guess, I, I guess the main, you know, and the other thing is we have to also say that we have approved two, two marijuana cultivators in town in addition to one retailer, right? And, yes. and where and are those located? In the, um, well, one of them is in the Marijuana Overlay District on Route, uh, route 5 and 10 across from Yankee Candle. Okay, uh, is that an indoor facility? Indoor facility. Okay. And that's a cultivator and a retailer. And yeah, processor, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And the other is in an RA district that's, that's just cultivation. Um, and we have no, there's no uh, movement to, to change that, to, to make it a processor or, or anything else. So it's, it's sort of like, and I think what, what we've learned is that a lot of people now don't want it in RA. So I think if we just, just by changing that, by putting that as a no instead of a special permit in RA, makes, it, makes a big difference and, and I yeah. think it improves our, our thing. And then whether we need to change our, the rest of our marijuana overlay district or not, which is pretty small to tell you the truth, and um, um, you know that's what we can also look into. I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of anxious for some of these facilities to actually get open I know. or to travel to somewhere to see, to see, because this this odor thing could be quite an issue. You know, so, I mean. Did you happen to? Um be driving on the upper road anytime this fall? I, I rode my bike up there, oh, you should, and I was inhaling a lot, but uh, I, I, don't, I didn't notice anything. You noticed something? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I ride my bike as well. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it's only really at the end of the season. It, yeah. it gets really strong at the end of the season. Um, and that's hemp, not marijuana. So. That's hemp, yeah. yeah. And hemp doesn't require the same indoor security no. facility. No. So, in terms of you know, responding to the question of, you know, what can farmers do that, yeah. you know, they can grow industrial hemp. And right. it's right. it's a very lucrative right. thing from what I understand. Well, we'll find out about that too. Yeah, I, guess I guess we will. <laughs> so, um, so, so I just, I think that's a huge thing. And then, then we can get into the other stuff. But by, by taking it out of RA and only, you know, saying that it's an industrial thing, actually that helps steer a lot of the other things that yep. we would fit into here. So if that's a direction that we're going, that, that helps to know that early on, I think. Yeah. Um, have you heard, has anybody heard anybody who wishes to keep PI. it in? What's PI? RA? PI is Plant Industrial, which is... Um, that's not an EBD. No. It's Plant Industrial. Is that, is that's that the DDIC? That's DDIC. That's DDIC. Oh, PI is DDIC. Yes. PI is DDIC, oh. yeah. The EPD is... It's the pickup oh, pick right? I had it the other way around. Sorry. And MO is a new, that's the new yeah. thing mm -hmm. that you're proposing. Well, that's well, it's just trying to reflect what you currently allow. Um, right. Because we don't, don't actually. You don't have MO in your table of regulations. We don't put our OLS in our table. We put it in a separate place. Maybe, yeah. maybe it doesn't make sense. There, so so just, just to be kind of clear about this, the, the, if you look at the commercial two district, um, I've got marijuana retailer, marijuana 
independent testing laboratory and marijuana transporter. Again, that's based on what the model bylaw recommends is that those kinds of uses are appropriate to a commercial district. Um, marijuana cultivator and, and product manu manufacturer um, seem to make sense only in the industrial, the PI, um, yeah. and then I guess the, um, you, you have it in the EPD, just I'm, I'm getting, trying to reflect what you have currently. You have, um, you have it in the EPD. So, I mean, e EPD is then you get into boarded by resident, uh, totally boarded by residential. So, uh -oh. it's also probably not an appropriate. Okay. Um, so, that's where I want to defer to you guys yeah. to really so we would, um, identify where it's appropriate. I have a question as far as the marijuana transport. Is that, are you thinking as an independent business from the cultivator? They can be. They can also be the same business, but that's a, that's a well, separate use, I guess, would under the Would the cultivator have a right almost to move their product from where it's <laughs> being grown to another facility? Or? Well, yeah, but we're talking about a business use that gets established that probably has a structure and it has truck storage and, and things like that. So they might hire somebody on the outside of Deerfield to do their transportation for them. That wouldn't be regulated well, under yours. They could, they could be a zoning. transporter of marijuana, regardless of where, where they could be getting from a Deerfield farm or a Hatfield farm right. or mm -hmm. a Grafton farm. Right. Okay. But the transporter could have its base in, in Deerfield and, and do transportation for surrounding towns as well, yeah. So that's, I think that's really kind of one of the big questions is how you want to handle the table of use regulations and what, what districts seem to make the sense. Other, um, the other thing that comes up all the time is that PI currently <laughs> is only, I think, the DDIC property and DDIC has its own board that I think at least feels like it. Very clear. Is it more rights than the planning board right. as far as what can go in there? And because it has some federal jurisdiction, they feel like marijuana is not going to ever go there until the federal law is changed. Oh, okay. So that's kind of just a, it's kind of an aside, but it's relevant. Yeah. Relevant in the sense that we could put it there, but it's exactly. not going to happen. Exactly. It's not going to happen. Unless, until the federal laws change. change. So maybe it's good to put it there, and then if be the federal laws change, it's, it's there. <laughs> right. Yeah. We'll be ready. Yeah. Like for the second coming. And then, uh, what have you? <laughs> and then I, I think we all need to refresh ourselves where our industrial is because it's, um, I, I used to think it was up at the railroad yard, and it's not even at the hall. Right. We uh, learned that industri was commercial. The industrial is a, on Route 5 and 10 a little, and along North Main Street a little, and Route 5 down here. Mm -hmm. Very limited. Mm -hmm. North Main? Oh, like where? where is it? Okay. Hard yes. yeah. And there's a, a parcel of land, if you remember a few years ago, oh, that right, changed right, right. the industrial um, there. but. Uh, but it all borders but residential. It all borders residential. residential. So then if and you talk close. about, yeah. And it's very close. So it's, um, you know, the more we get into this, it's like so little. It, it's almost like if there's no property available, then why do we even Well, that, and <laughs> also we're, we're at become a risk of legal action because if we make it so that, remember, we ran. Too restrictive. Too restrictive. Yeah. We're, right. we're functionally not right. allowing it even though. Which so. is why, you know, you might want to consider the possibility is you, you you adopt this table of use regulations without the asterisk, which says, you know, in those districts, but only in the in the marijuana overlay district. You you could you could adopt this table, allow them by special permit with site plan approval in all those districts that I'm I'm showing, without that asterisk. Right. Yeah. Um, and that would give you substantially more, more area to. To you know, allow that sort of business and. I think we need to get out a map. Yeah, yeah I mean, be helpful to have a bigger one. Um, you know, and then, and then if you say borders the residential, here, then, then you totally take out a lot of everything. the industrial and I mean, on five a, and ten. This is a very residential town. Yeah. You know, and then then you could say you could make the railroad yard an overlay district. Uh, I guess is what. You, well, is what railroad you. probably should be industrial. That's crazy. I mean, it's not. Oh, right. That, that I just drove around down there. There uh, are but, houses down there, but, but it, not it, a lot. But it's funny because even our industrial area doesn't have any industry. No, I know. It's all commercial. No, okay. Right.
but I guess we still got to do this. <laughs> well, it's it's an exercise to really sort of yeah. sort yeah. sort through which district is appropriate. And, and the other thing is that, well, you know, we've already got two, and that's twenty percent of our liquor licenses. Well. No, so really, I, I guess think the twenty percent is for the retail. For the retail, oh, yeah. so we only maybe. But we have this bylaw now, that, and that's one thing that we need to address. That the establishments can't be. I, I forget the number. Was it within two thousand feet of another one? Yeah. And we wanted to change that, so it was that just meant within our community, right? right. Because there's a possibility that yeah. down on Route Five and Ten, yeah. there might be two. So I think there was. I saw an exact place you could just add that. You could say within your town, you know, yeah, that what, two thousand thing. What, what section is that in? So we fix that right now. Um, it was early. <coughs> I think it was in his. Was it? It was. It was. Uh, he's got the two thousand feet, and I, I right away said it's got to refer. It's in the physical. Physical is that physical? We I found two thousand pounds of marijuana. Well, that's a little bit of marijuana. And then 500 feet. That's of a school, right? The private school, yeah. Right. And, and I thought that was, that was the other thing. Is like, any, some yeah, of this is just in the CCC. It's in the state right. laws. So oh, do you have is. to repeat it? Or is it? Um, yeah, so it's, it's section 4665A3. Just pre-existing yeah. public or private providing kindergarten. So it's actually not a daycare. Yeah. So, do we want to just tag on the, the words that, to the end of that sentence within yeah. the town of Deerfield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you? Oh, that's the thing you just said. Yeah. No, but tell me the number. It's six four six six five, and then it's section A, and then it's number three. So at the end of that sentence, where it says periods, right. you put a comma and say in, in, yeah. in the town Within of Deerfield. Yeah. We just have to locate on a press level. Yeah, I guess comma within the town of Deerfield. Yeah. So if it's not within the town of Deerfield, it doesn't matter. Yep. So um, we could go through this kind of section by section, if you like, and try to see if there's any issues or concerns. Um, I think. And so you're pretty confident that everything that's in here is already in ours, kind of? Or, or I guess we can go back at the end. Um, we can go back at the end and double check or something. Well, the definition's really long right there. Yeah. And do we have the definition? Mm -hmm. Oh, we, yeah. yeah. So saying, I haven't had time to really compare them. It yeah, takes know. some time, you know? That's why I, was, I didn't know, Chris, you hadn't done that. I, I have not gone through a complete comparison with your existing. What I, what I did kind of cross-check was the model bylaw I cross-checked with the proposed um, Dick Evans bylaw just to see where how they matched up. And, and, and which, by the way, we've never reviewed. I don't want to give too much. We don't credence to. Yeah. To that. Well, it, again, it had some really good ideas, yeah. and I well, and I found too. some I mean, things in there yeah. that I thought were useful to to plug into this one. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Where it says reporting requirements. Um, Number three, it says permitted marijuana establishment shall file an annual written report to and appear before the planning board no later than January 31st of each calendar year, providing a copy of all current applic applicable state licenses for the facility and its ownership. Is this, that, that's the standard that other towns do. They have these guys, you know, one or two or three of them, you know, come to their January, December meeting and and everybody can, checks their boxes. Yeah. What I'd like okay. to address, uh, Anne Mary, so you know, is there, that type of language is already in the uh, uh, agreement, community host agreement with the select board. And they okay. have to 
uh, supply the select board with you know their sales numbers and things like that. So, so okay. This says this says planning board. Yeah. Well, I know this is what this is a proposal, but right. I don't. I maybe we don't need it if it's already in another town. Right. Let's be I mean, um, thing is, because the planning board has held on to the special permitting, it does feel like I will say that that I find I find that very comforting or reassuring that we would have some sort of and mild enforcement moment where somebody would come in and say, we're still, it's still us. Uh, because we, we have in our bylaw that, that it can't transfer. Right. And no, that's, it, that's right. I, I, but I guess I, I haven't thought about uh, it just feels if it like, makes more sense. It feels to me like since we kind of held on to a lot of this, that that would give us just a mild reinforcement of, of um, I think enforcement. My, 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 only, my only thought with that is that um, with the select board, mm -hmm. they have, I, I'm going to stop laughing, they have the staffing to keep right. track of the no. paperwork that's yeah, yeah, being yeah. submitted yeah. and uh, deal with all, because there's a lot to it. I mean, they'd have to yeah. bring in the town accountant um, you know the town administrator, and but, there's a lot of paperwork involved. I think that this on is, this board we would lose that. Agreed, know? but this is just the licenses. This isn't for any, any. Um, there's no. Well, didn't it talk about what she was saying about the annual sales? Current, and stuff uh, like uh, uh. No. no licenses. Licenses. So that would just oh. give us a copy sense. of all applicable state licenses. Sorry. Oh. State for the facility, facility and owner demonstrate no. continued compliance okay. with the standards of the right. special permit. Which so is, that would give us an enforcement moment where they have to come do that here. We'd have to remember it every year. Somebody put it on their phone. <laughs> and, then, and that's um, why it's appropriate for the planning board to do it because it's compliance with the terms of the special yeah, permit our, that you, yeah. that you yeah. issue. It just feels good to have that because otherwise we'd have to remember or we would have to hmm. put it in as a condition. or Right. One, one thing that is a little different in this bylaw from your current standard is that site plan approval is is hmm. what I'm proposing is that site plan approval be included in, in your permitting process yeah right now it's just special permit the mm -hmm. way your the language works in your your oh, current pilots so but it was yeah. um, I wondered about that because it's it would have to be a change of use so it automatically is a site plan it requires a site plan review it's fine to put it here, but uh, under your current, we already yeah. require it basically because there is no. Okay, I was just going based on the table of use regulations, yeah. and it didn't, uh, didn't appear there. Sometimes there's so. some jiggery so yeah. so it's yeah. nice to say. I think, you know, site plan is change of use or something, anything like 600 square feet or bigger, so this is always going to come. <coughs> okay. But it's good to tell them that up front, I guess, too. So. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I think the purposes and the definitions. Uh, we could probably skip over without going through those in exhaustive detail and maybe kind of get into the, the meat of the, the actual. But, but Kip had a point that if, if the definition is wider or narrow, more narrow, then it matters. Right, it, it, broadens, something that it, well, it broadens the scope immensely. You know, right now, a, a cannabis cultivator means that he can grow it and ship it off, period. That's not what this says? No, it's, well, it's for planting, trending, improving, harvesting, processing, packaging, preparation, and the main, you know. But that's just all farming stuff. Yeah. No, not processing and packaging. Processing. processing. We remember Picking we went through this before. The processing no. is the processing it to get get it out the door, not processing yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta be careful of that because I agree. I agree, but because if if all of a sudden they're they're doing other things to it, you know, turning it. Well, I'm making, I don't know, I'm just going to say cakes. I'm making this into cakes. Right. It's, it's a process. Well, beers. But that's called marijuana product manufacturer. So, so I guess maybe, mm. Kip, what you're thinking is okay. that you have to, in order to be considered a cannabis cultivator, you have to do all of those things. But that, it's just saying basically that any of those things would be included in the in definition. Fact, yeah, you've got marijuana cultivators. So you've broke, you have a lot more definitions than we have. Right. Yeah. Well, because there is a certain amount of processing that has to happen to any crop before it can be moved in a way that you're not paying for a lot more transportation costs. Like you have to get rid of some of any plant in order to
to reduce your transportation costs. So the same thing is true for this, but if then you're going to call it trimming or processing, then you're opening up, you know, this so the these board, gray gray areas. The word is manufacturing. That's the one we want to right. We want to be very clear that there's manufacturing product, which is that's further away. That's right here to manufacture, to compound, blend, extract, infuse, whether it's prepare cannabis or marijuana product. Yeah. So we want to be really clear that there's processing the the plant, the the, the and then there's manufacturing product. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's. Well, yeah, we didn't have any of those. same thing in the definition of cultivation and process of medical marijuana. Those are two different things, and that uh, you know, in accordance with these regulations, to be considered a manufacturing use and is not agricultural. That's a contradiction of our thing because we're not allowing manufacturing. Right. So, so the next one, the, you mean the marijuana, the second one. Well, I, I read the last sentence. Sorry, you're right. Next to the last sentence you're right. in the first. It says manufacturing paragraph. there. Yeah. So can I ask you guys, you know, what was your thought behind differentiating between processing and whatever else you called it, the next step? Well, well the state makes some of these definitions. Right? Okay. So our main thing was, in our last discussion, our main thing was people seemed to be okay with cultivation, and then everything else they wanted to restrict a lot yep. more. Yep. That was what basically the discussion was very okay. limited, very limited retail and manufacturing very limited manufacturing and that's kind of how we got to the bylaws we have um, okay and the uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah. and the retail part of it was for you know um, the product itself you know along with maybe some of the gummies or that besides the the medical dispensary thing but I think that it was pretty clear that the, the use, if you will, uh, a marijuana cafe, let's just call it, was something that was not. Right. We're not. Uh, uh, we not but there's sure. a lot of that okay. here, too. So. I guess I'm still confused as to why the um, manufacturing would be less appealing. Yeah. It's just, I think that we felt at the time <laughs> that it, um, that brings it closer to the um, the consumer, I don't know, well, this is the way well, I feel. We, didn't, we weren't against it, it's just where no, we're not. located. We and just wanted yeah, to yeah. be very yeah. restricted about where it went, where kind it of went. like. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but because, because imagine, Mary, Mary, that we, we said you could grow it anywhere. Oh, so no, was, I get it. I'm like, just wondering, was, like. We were, we were yeah. all so, so about liberal now. The way it is, there. you have five acres or more. So if you have five acres and it could be right next to a residential area, and if you make that. One thing to grow it now, all of a sudden, they're going to start putting up a building that's quite large and tall mm -hmm. for people to do their processing right. and packaging and baking. And you know, that's what we were trying to, I believe, mm -hmm. trying to prohibit or we're to control. To limit. I control. shouldn't say use the word prohibit, right. but just control. to control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, so we wouldn't have these big factories going up in residential areas. I guess I have a different concept of it. I guess I feel like if it were, mar in terms of how do I want to say this? Like, I guess I would be less concerned about someone, you know, creating soap or baking or doing whatever. I guess I'm not imagining big, big factories in this town doing that. And I guess I'm imagining, like, it being um, more worrisome to me as a mom and a community member to have, like, marijuana plants like that seems a little bit more concerning to me than to have someone baking that's, with it you must so not have been at those meetings I, so <laughs> this is where i'm actually kind of contrary like i see the plants further away from consumption yeah so I mean, but you can go think <coughs> and like stuff no, it in a bowl and the, smoke the, it the if it's, you know what i mean no, but like you can't like you, you can't no but i'm saying like in terms of i know you can't, you can't. right yeah, yeah, yeah. but i'm saying i'm saying in terms of like availability to the to well, the consumer, like, I feel like any, the raw product is so much. Anybody can have 12 plants. Right. Yeah, no, I know. No, I know. And I'm not actually even arguing. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what. We, we weren't against the processing. It was just put them in, put them in the overlay district. That's all. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a factory kind of thing. So she could go where, where other, uh, other manufacturers. manufacturers are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all. And my, my concern, I will, I will add that 
this is just me speaking, is that the closer it gets to something that's very easy, consumable, right. the more cons restrictions I want on it. So I want it to be someplace where I can see it and that it's, and the, the, the state has a lot of restrictions around that, so I'm not, I'm not really like, you know, Salem witch trial here. It's but right. I'm just saying, you know, that was something we wanted to keep it, it track is, of. It right. is something that we need, we really need to think about, and I, I feel a little bit, uh, you know, ill-prepared, not just tonight, but in general, because I just don't have the knowledge to know what goes behind this. I mean, we've had some fatalities right in the area of, I'm going to use drugs that were not, how can I say it? They, they, they weren't they killed tested. People. They weren't tested or whatever. And that now on the state, there's been three fatalities from marijuana products that are, were purchased from dispensaries that they don't know if they were altered or, or whatever. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on here. And I just... Just I thought that was supposed to be one of the benefits of legalizing it. Yeah, well, I guess not. Yeah, but millions of knuckleheads kill themselves with perfectly legal... Well, that's the thing. Oh, we're not here day, to talk so. about... No, I know, but I'm just saying... No, so, but I mean, so I'm just saying in the testing, to, because we don't even have... Like, there's a testing we, thing, too. That Remember, that was, like, testing. Like, oh. Well, and that's and a whole other... That's a whole other... Um, the other hypothetical I wanted to throw out there was um, if someone wants to open up a bakery, um, where does that fall in terms of... You know, processing, or I mean, well, but how would we the think The difference about is, that? is if I wanted to start a bakery, I can't just start one in my backyard or my house because I'm in a. No, I know that's what I'm saying. So I have to go to a commercial area and stuff like that. Right. So what we've done is we've created the overlay district, saying that's the only. I guess place. I'm not familiar enough with the overlay okay. district. I think that's the issue right there. Well, we need a map. So you, it's, yep. it's pretty simple. It's sure basically does. from Elm Street to the Waitley Line, from Route Five and Ten to the railroad tracks down here. It's okay. a very small area. I don't think it's... So it's Cumberland yeah. okay, Farms gotcha. and Atlantic Furniture. Right. Okay. Well. All right. Yeah. And there's a couple other... So it's not there. anything that wouldn't make sense anyway. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And so here's the testing lab is, is right on the usage. That's yet another... And, and the testing labs are just another indoor... Right. right. That kind of thing. They're testing cameras. They're right there. Under the test. <laughs> they're yeah. testing them how not to smell, I think. So <laughs> well, just maybe they need that technology. Oh, they're making sure well, they have. Their product, they have stable product. Mm -hmm. All right, so, I, so well, I agree. Kip, we're not prepared, but that's why Chris is bringing this forward and told right. us that a lot of other people sure. that have looked into this more than us have looked into it. Right. So I'm, I'm willing to go with this. Um, so if we go beyond the definitions, yeah, then, beyond the definitions. Um, to the applicability. Yeah, applicability, 4663. I guess I'd say one of the important things there, somebody brought up the issue of social consumption. Um, and it, that was a, a restriction that I thought was appropriate to put in here. Um, all, all marijuana social consumption operations are exp expressly prohibited anywhere in the town of Deerfield. That, that, that's what I think I heard you all say. Yes, you um, did. And, and so that's in, the, that, in that section. In our public hearings, yeah. So. yeah. The ver that applicability, that? the very first sentence. Nothing in this section shall be construed to supersede federal and state laws <laughs> governing. It, it's against the law. It's against the federal law. It's against federal law. It does. Yeah, it, that it means is, you, you know. can't bring it into the state of New York. You can't. That's the federal law. I, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I, under, I understand it's, it's, it's legal here, but I mean, that right there, it's like... Federalists. Yeah. <laughs> so... So you take out the word federal there? <laughs> well, what you kept saying, if you leave it in, then everything else is mute until federal law changes. Yeah, if it changes. Well, well but that's... How it is for everything. Nothing and anything we can do can supersede anything federal. You haven't heard about that? No one, no one questioned. No that? one questioned that one. I, I can ask uh, the, yeah, the creators means. of the model what they think yeah. about that well, issue. I mean, so, so if the federal says, I mean, this is why you can't bank, or I don't know, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So then this doesn't apply to hemp, which we know, right? social yep. consumption. So that's the same words Where's that are in our... Where's the social consumption? Why am I not seeing it? At the, the, the top of the second Oh, right here. Yeah. Ah, dang. Is this... 
Chris, since you seem to be a lot more involved in this, have you heard how the people in the Cambridge case were, there were some people who owned expensive apartments or condos, I'm not sure what that is, sued the city of Cambridge for allowing the marijuana facilities to go into their neighborhoods because of the people that are coming there. They devalued their things and they're suing mm -hmm. for hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. And they're suing in federal court. And, you know, Cambridge, at the, my last thing, I, I asked a town lawyer a while ago and he says, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. I didn't know if you'd followed that or heard anything about I, that. I did not. That sounds like a really interesting case. Though. I, can, I, can, I can imagine well, that happening. I mean, well, they, they just, I won't take them much time, but they did take it to state court, and the state court threw it out. So they turned right around, brought it in federal court, and now it's a full-blown trial. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. Well, if you've seen the dispensaries that are open, um, the ones that I've driven by anyway, seem to have pretty long lines of people coming out of them oftentimes um, at all hours of their operation. I did see in Northampton was quite busy, but I've been by there a few times, and I've never seen any lines. When I've you know, it by. seems like Northampton has, has kind of calmed down a little bit. There's one that I happen to drive by. In, one and it's never anybody there. in Greenfield? Yeah it's, very yeah, it's interesting. There's one in Great Barrington that I happen to drive by a lot, and I don't know if it's because it's close New to New York State. That's what they oh. say. But there, right. there is a line yeah. and, and police presence all the time oh, because yeah. the parking is a problem and there's yeah. just so many and people. Northampton was getting people from Connecticut, but now they have other places to go. So I closer think that was closer by, yeah. That's probably and it. Greenfield's not. Vermont, is it legal in Vermont? Or they grow their own. So, yeah. so maybe so it wouldn't be that, that same sort of issue mm -hmm. here. So, all right, so we like that social consumption. We like the special permit. In our so, so given what I said, is it still, I guess it's still fine to say that special permit and site plan review, ultimately, we do them simultaneously. Yeah. That's the difference. Social consumption. So, I don't know if you want to put a, a separate number next to social consumption yeah we could do make that it stand out more maybe yeah yeah and then i would have an easier time finding yeah, it. i know both of you couldn't find it so that's what made me think about that <laughs> yeah I, I think that's an important issue we'll make that a major heading so there's some standards for location here they're encouraged to be in existing vacant buildings where yeah. possible 500 feet from schools um, 2,000 oh, feet. Oh, it doesn't say childcare or pre-K. Yeah, which was our, that we had that little. Yeah, I think that's. Snifu. There's a different section for that. Hang on a second. If it's not, then it should go to, should, why not just go here? Well, that is a really good point. I think, I thought I had put that in here, but I guess I didn't. So, there is the possibility of including daycare playgrounds and churches in that. Do you want to do that? We had something. I don't remember churches. the technicalities, <laughs> Sean, is the situation okay. uh, on South Main Street. Yes. But I, I, think, I think that we agreed that because of the large fence, the railroad tracks, and the road, even though from property line to property line it was... Uh, too close, it, it seemed pretty improbable. Exactly. That the, so, the right. children, so, okay. And um, the daycare concept, the thing was, she was a family. Right. Yeah, it was a, taking care of two kids. Is I, you know, well, no, it was, I think, well, well she, just, she was, she was, she was, she was licensed she, for more. She was but licensed, I, but it was a so family. It's I, like a, it was, I think that we should be careful as to, you know, uh, keep the distance, but have room for some sort of an appeal process mm -hmm. right. within come in if there was another situation like right. that. Like right. if 91 is between, well, you know the three-year-old's not gonna cross two lanes of 91 right. and the fences on both right. sides to get right. there. Right. 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 right, and I kinda wonder what the purpose of, honestly, what the purpose of having the word church in there is for, like. Well, I mean, because. You run it, the young, bus, young. churches do schools out of them, yeah. like actually daycares, right. et cetera. Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a revenue yeah. earner for those. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I think that, um, I think I think that it was a family cares. You know, like we do want to 
because she may run into licensure issues. That's it. The other thing, we, we asked her, like, we're making this regulation for the town, but she probably those daycare oh, licenses. Oh, she on the other side said that she couldn't right. be located she, within the... That would really uh, be yeah, above yeah. Her. Right. Okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I think that saves everybody from yeah. heartache later on. Yeah. But then you get in, you say playground. I mean, who's definitely playground? How big playground, of a playground? And, right. Yep. That, really that, that might be tough, you're right. Yeah. We had this thing where, where children, blah, 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 congregate. We had a worry. Remember, we, we were Right, and then someone that. said that Yankee yeah, Candles. Is, is that in your existing bylaw? Our existing one is. Well, why don't I just replicate that language? Well, no, we want to improve it. See if you can oh. improve it. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it, cause then people said, well, kids this. go to Yankee Candles, so we can't put a place across the street from them. It's like, yeah, but mm. Yankee Candle isn't a place that's built for kids to go and receive Congregate. care. Uh, yeah, know, just, if you had lawyers, you could get into, you know. Oh, I got lawyers. You know what they do. <laughs> Nothing against this chair's really loud. Um, it's the low. I know, I noticed you didn't today. Thanks. Really needs to go in the dumpster. Um, All right, so let's improve our current language if you can. Uh, that's a tough one. Well, you can change it from... You can change it to pre-K to 12, or, yeah. or providing child care. Yeah, it says kindergarten. Mm. Yeah. Well, one of the things about the, the child thing was, though, that little kids, we're not as worried about the three-year-old. Right. So we are about the 13-year-old, right? Right. So that's that, one of the issues. That's true. But again, the state law is so that, that these things are sealed up tight, so yeah. it's really not an issue of, I, I don't know what it's an issue of. Well, I think some of it, I'll be honest with you, it's not, it's about normalizing it. And that, that's one of the things, you, you don't want to normalize yet another, you know, altering substance. Mm -hmm. And we're denormalizing well, that's, tobacco, so that's a great yeah. mo 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 momentum, health-wise. We have so, something um, about you so can't see it from the, the street. You can't right. see it from the public. At I think. the state, I don't know if the you've state ever regs are so yeah, um, toward that. That and is and stuff like that. under physical requirements somewhere. And and this one about you can't be located on a parcel which abuts a residential use or residential. Right. Use. That. That's, oh, well, why does it even that's say in that? location. Why doesn't it just say um, occupied by a pre-existing public or private school? And then why does it have to say providing an education? That's what schools do. But, so it could just be a school. That way you don't have to delineate the grades. Oh, I see. So. Get rid of everything after providing. Hmm. Just pre-existing public or private school. Period. Providing education, period, is it what you're saying? No. no. Nothing about the, just after school, just period. We're just assuming that schools do educating. Oh, I mean, okay. that's a big assumption and everything, but. Okay. Yeah, that seems like it's extraneous language. Okay. Um, so not on a parcel abutting residential use is number five under that section, John. Is that what you were asking about? Yeah, that, that's four, right? Um, oh, I'm sorry, four. If it, yeah. Again, it just gets into we really are narrowing down. We have so much residential. Right. RA districts that, uh, but it may make sense, especially when you get into smells and yeah. Stuff. I'm trying to remember where it, there's a spot in here where it says it shouldn't be visible. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it has a screen. I think that's screens. Okay, uh, it's under physical requirements number one, so it's D, D1. It says, it must take place at a fixed location within a fully enclosed building and shall not be visible from the exterior of the business. Does that seem like it's consistent with what you were looking for? Yeah. And again, I think that says something in the, in the state guidelines, too. So. so B is the section on use, security, and hours of operation. Um, D1. Hours of operation get to be set by the planning board. 
fixed location, fully enclosed, not visible. Got it. This section on security was. On number two, do you think we? I'd like to see us add, uh, not just within, but on the premises, within or on. Okay. I'm sorry. What are you talking about? Two. Number two. B two. B two. Okay. That's fine. to look up RMD and OMM. Yeah, what's, what's that? Is <laughs> that in the news table? I mean, in the definitions. Yeah. Watch me. D. Registered marijuana dispensary. Yeah, it is. I just found it. And O. Medical marijuana dispensary. Check on the OMMD. So spell both of them out, yeah. Yeah. What is the other one? The MM has to be medical marijuana. But, yeah, it doesn't appear to be in the definitions, so. We think everything was in the definitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. RMD, I guess. This could grow to many more pages if you put it. <laughs> I know. He's going to look into that. Okay. I'll, I'll check on that. Then the next one, I would actually. Um, that's the, medical the, marijuana dispensary. Yeah. I don't know what the that security is. Measure, measures? Yep. I'd almost want them to provide that to the Deerfield Planning the Deerfield Police Department first. Deerfield what? Police they Department. should provide that to the Deerfield Police Department, not subsequently to us, but first. Okay. Because then we get, so we, we, we want the input from the we, police department. We don't want it. We don't want to. The other way around. Okay. So we'll just we cross out subsequently there. Yeah. Okay. Well. We, I mean, that's one of the things we. We checked a lot with the police department before we did the bylaws before. Well, I think it should be changed to provide to the Deerfield Planning Board after pro being provided to the Deerfield Police Department. After. And after. Yeah. Well, if we get the same time, we're, we're not going to do anything until. Until we, we get for, yeah. We get from that anyway. Yeah. I mean, but this is kind of about enforcement, not about, right? No, it's about their plan. Right, right. But appropriate enforcement of the security measures. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's protocol. Fair enough. But uh, there again, that's okay, a lot of state understand. regulations for that. So. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's so much. Yes. Is there any other business that has to ask the police's permission or get their okay for a security plan? Like, does a liquor no. store or a bank have to say, hey, is our no. security plan okay? No, but that's a state regulation. But, yeah, we don't have control on that. But the, um, the um, like a bank does when they move money, they have, FDIC has all kinds of regulations around mm -hmm. how they move money. I guess I just want to make sure that um, procedurally it mirrors whatever else is a high security you know. I don't remember anything else, yeah. Okay. I, I can't think of anything else either. Okay. So. No drive through. <laughs> Still no drive throughs in Deerfield. So licensing, they can't commence business until they get their final license from the Cannabis Control Commission. And then there's the uh, number shall not exceed 20% of the the licenses as we discussed before. Does that all make sense? Yeah, and I think we're at a point where the fraction can be rounded up so it does become two. Because I think we have less than 10. Do we have less than 10? Mm -hmm. what? Okay. So that, that first one there is almost like, well, of course you can't open before you get that cannabis. I mean, right. It's kind of it seems like an important thing just so mm. you don't have any loopholes mm -hmm. 
So if you have, you only allow two, and you have one. two approved now. Well, one. We only have one. Approved. This is retail. This is about retail. Okay. We have one cultivation and one cultivation oh, okay. versus retail. Okay. And and I'm not sure, given our overlay district. You yeah. can't have another one because you'd no. be within 2,000 feet of the first one. Right. Which is a little... Suspect. Suspect. <laughs> <laughs> so the physical requirements section, um, I think, is pretty important. talks about, um, again, everything has to be in a fully enclosed building, no outside storage, restricted uh, gross floor area to 2,500 feet, got to have ventilation to prevent odors from escaping, um, can't be a nuisance to the community. There's some discussion about signage requirements. So the number, sorry, four, two. No odor from marijuana. The exterior of the medical marijuana business or at any adjoining use of your property. So I think that I think we have something similar to that now, so that gets back to your right now it says no marijuana establishment shall be operated so as to cause a nuisance to the community by no noise, odor, dust, glare, fumes, vibration, heat. So you know, how do you that's an enforcement thing that, that happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, we've, I'm going to say, that I'm just going to put it as the town has struggled in the past with a lot of enforcement type things. Um, I know for, for noise, it's an issue of, well, you have to know what the baseline is to know right. what, if they go beyond that. You know, it's hard to, hard to do with odor, but I think it's no odor. Do you have... Here it's a no, here we call it a like a nuisance kind of it's if it's a, you know right I mean, and that, I that's so subjective I mean I, know. I I mean if I'm walking down the sidewalk I I think I can smell somebody smoking a cigarette from 50 feet away yeah you know and it's a nuisance so if you're walking around and you can smell like the cannabis you know it's like wow what do you do mm -hmm. call the police and what are they going to do how much. Um, so I'm just well, curious if anybody's ever written, like, how do I want to, you know, what that really means, if there's any more yeah, enforcement. That, that is a big one. And frankly, this section five, that, that language came from the suggested language from Dick Evans. Um, that was one of, the, one of the pieces that I thought was. I feel like that's just asking for trouble, to be honest with you. Like, for example, I can smell BBC every time I walk my dog past there. I think it smells kind of like Cheerios. I mean, uh, SpaghettiOs for some reason. I kind of <laughs> like it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I certainly don't mind it, but yeah. having that there is reason enough for someone to, is, even if it's not a nuisance, but because it exists. Right. When I was a kid, I lived in a corn pot processing plant in town. Oh, oh, I lived also, when I lived in Florida, I lived in a mill, mill town. Yeah. Talk about a smell. Oh, yeah. Talk about downtown with the pickles. It smells like yeah. I like to yeah. smell. So or I'm, I'm or the candles, for that matter. Candles? The candles you know, yeah. I can candles. smell the candles at my house, and I'm, yeah, you know, several like miles away. So. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So here we're saying is a whole different candy. <sighs> no odor from marijuana can be detected by a normal person. Normal sense of smell. So it doesn't, it doesn't say if you like it or not, you know, it just says don't right. order. But how, right. how, do we, how do you make sure that's going to need And how do you know someone isn't driving past in a car getting high and someone's well, not going to yeah, be I like, mean, oh, my goodness, it's the plant? It's over a period of time. Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, you have to go back a couple But what times. I'm saying to you is, like, yeah. how do we prove? How do we know? How do we just, how is this not handing people just a reason to complain? Well, I, I, I would say that. You know, it would have to be probably multiple people over multiple times. Yeah. I think you'd have a good idea if one person said, oh, I smell that now. Like, well, can you smell it today? Well, not today, but the other day, you know, so it is, 
Well, the corn processing plant always sounded like popcorn in the morning. It smelled disgusting, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I bet you the town didn't have this zoning bylaw. So, no, you know, people right. could complain, exactly. but they couldn't do anything about it. So now we're putting something to the... Except for that, what can you do? Then you, I mean, if it's, it is a byproduct of the business. But like, it happened, like candles. it happened to Rayos and Amherst all those years ago. They made them move oh, their like roaster coffee? yeah, down to Hadley because the um, senior housing is right behind the roaster and as yummy as coffee smells after a while. Hmm. It's just not that delicious. It was invasive, That's right? a yeah. good point. Well, I think it's important to have some language in here so that you have the ability to address when there really is a significant right, problem. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it is a tough thing. I, I think communities struggle with this, not just for marijuana uses, but for all kinds of industrial uses. And right. Well, and I can see because people become so moralistic around this. That's the problem. You know? Yeah, corn, not so much. Right, or coffee, not so much. So there's some signage requirements. Cannabis plants and products can't be visible from the outside of the building. Yeah, so that'd be I think that's weird. I think we have lottery mm -hmm. signs, and I think we have um, oh, see, I, I, Corona signs, and I think that we have, you know. And so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that's not another moralistic. Well, two things about wait, it. One wait. is it's state. So are you okay. talking about number six here? Um, the signage we're yes. The so that's saying that this is a warning. This is like a warning. No, no, signage. seven. I'm sorry. Okay, oh. sorry. So no plants, products, or paraphernalia shall be oh. visible. Okay. So I guess, you know, you have lottery signs and you have alcohol signs and you have. So you, you think it's an un thing. unfair restriction, is what you're. I guess saying. I'm wondering what the the thinking is. You know. So it's, it's what. You, it's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Which is that. We are not in the business of normalizing. Like, we're not, we really don't want to create a new social norm or with a, another uh, in altering substance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm sorry about those corona signs. I really am. If I could roll that back, I would, but I wouldn't want to add the gotcha. Joe Camel okay. to the mix. Yeah. Uh, and having just gotten rid of Joe Camel. That's, right. that's really okay. well said. Yeah, we're getting yeah. Gotcha. On the other hand, you would drive through the state, you have no idea what these businesses are. <laughs> they do. They look like porn <laughs> because they're so, so anonymous. Oh, right. Obtuse. And which is Obtuse. weird too, right? I mean, Obtuse. if you're. I don't know, but at least it's not normalizing a, a visual around. Or, and going further, I guess in some states, the cannabis control, when the CCC put it all together, they did a lot of looking at Washington, you know, out west in Colorado. And this is what they came back saying: We're not. We don't want to become a Las Vegas, a, right? A, yeah. a cannabis Las Vegas. So the planning board can impose restrictions and conditions on the time, place, and manner of the operations as needed, including building design setbacks, visibility, etc. Now this is all still dealing with just. Um, re, um, all types. All types. All, all, types. all types. Yeah, okay. the, the building. So this just um, this is partly a question because of our current um, situation with Dollar General is that in site plan we normally have less influence than we do in special permit, and so here we're lumping them together. I don't know if there's any issues because in site plan we can't necessarily tell someone you have to be set back more than that. There, there's, in our bylaws it says you have to be set back 10 feet. We can't tell them to go back you know, 30 feet just arbitrarily. But in special permit, you, you might be able to tell them that. Um, so I just, I guess just hmm. That's interesting. Um, I guess that would make me want to think about <laughs> taking a look at your site plan approval and, and trying to make it a little bit more, a little stronger. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but <laughs> well, I, I think it, you know, like, it, it is you know a, I mean. it's a special permit it's, yeah. with site plan approval. So your special permit Come powers first, come into play. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, as long as as long as we say that that's 
Yep. We're asking you to do this because of the special permit, not because it's right. Yeah. Like change the get rid of that yellow sign. You can't say that in special permit. No. Not only do you need to do it now. So we okay with that section? Yeah, I mean that gives you a lot of Oh, that's in the special permit. In our bylaws, we can look at all these different issues that you have. I think this is a weird yeah. bylaw right here. So there's a section on reporting requirements. They have to provide under number, number one their contact information of the operators. Oh, the business owner? Is that a standard thing for business yes. owners? Okay. All right. Yeah. That, okay. Because something goes wrong. Then Wait, you say, I get you it. You call them, you say, your building's on fire, you've got, you know, we've got the fire. As long as it's for everybody. Everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> like even the solar, which for, there's not even anybody there, but we have, what is that, what is that called, that box? The, yeah. Right. Whatever, there's some box okay. that the fire department can access. That okay, they can gotcha. So here's something that um, I would like in here. Let's see what you guys, and I don't know if it was what made me think about it. Maybe it's here. That the owner, the, the actual owner, should have to attend our planning board meetings. That's three. But does it say that? Oh, yeah, right. This is my, part of my issue around. We get all kinds of people? ghost companies coming in front of us. <laughs> we get engineers. We, the, you don't see the owner. The, it was Vesh that made me crazy but, finally. I put it Remember the, when Vesh, nobody would ever show up? Right, but the reality of it is the owner of the company might be just the money man. He might not have any clue. But an agent. Which is why we want we them We want them. Yeah, yeah, we want an you, agent for the All right, but if you ask them a question, you say, I don't know, I'm going to defer to my engineer. Uh, That's fine if he, if he refers to him, but I want, to, I want them to be in this building when we're talking about their establishment. It drives you crazy when you're talking to just the engineer. So you're right, the engineer knows more of the answers. Right. Yeah. But I think we have a right to see the owner of these things. I, don't, I, I mean, I understand you 100%, but I mean, I don't want to use the word. If, say, you have a large corporation here and their headquarters in California, you think the guy's going to come out here to come to this meeting? No. If we put it in our bylaws and require it, then yeah, it's the guy from Chicago came every month for, you, for four he, months. His lawyer would show up, and it's perfectly legal. You can't. Yeah, exactly. But, but at some point, well, okay, they got the guy from Chicago, yeah. from whatever the, the solar, he yeah. came every single time. He wasn't the owner, though. Yeah, he was. No, uh, uh, he represented. I think. He represented the lawyer. I, I, I don't care. Uh, like at least he. I, he there yeah, was a he person. was a real nice guy. He wasn't guy. like Vesh. Every time they sent somebody that was right, just a, right, right. A, a doer, not a like a right. responsible. But you, you, you can send a lawyer in your absence. You know, you just then do that. You can't require. But an agent. Why can't we require? An even agent. A, even a, well, I, an I agent say, of the owner. Maybe in court, an individual. But in most cases, a lawyer can represent somebody. Why can't in our bylaws? You, prove, you show me some place where it says we can't require it. We care about local I mean, businesses this in this town. And that's it. So to me, that's not You can put it in there, but I don't think you can make it. I want to put it in. <laughs> and if they want to send a lawyer and tell us that, that, that we're wrong, that's then one thing. They can write the check for their lawyer and but everybody can show up is, and we'll sign their thing. But we care about, business, we care yeah. about local businesses. We, we care about this town. The owner of the business should care about this town and they should be here. That's it. And if they don't want to do that, then they should go to someone. another town. That's fine. We're not yeah. stopping them from going to another town. I, I. And another thing about this, actually, Kip, that's kind of interesting is that um, there are this. Okay, so I just read this. Spotlight did a piece in the Globe, and I'll, I'll about you know there's ownership issues. CCC has ownership um, concerns. They don't want to you know open this up. It's it's already Spotlight Boston Globe Spotlight's already cited that. Various companies have large holdings in yeah, more than I, oh, exactly. two or three or whatever. So they're already they're already getting around it. But at the very least, we have an opportunity to say here, we'd like to see a representative of the owner. I mean, we, we had this with Sons Mass when we weren't absolutely sure if it was Gorsuch or this, you know, like we had a few things going on. It, it, but we've been at least dealing with the same people regularly. Yeah. I don't oh. mind. Dick can stand in there. So I would say the like actual owner of the business must appear at at least one planning board public hearing because the public should see them standing here. Yep. Sitting here. So I was, you can try I was it. thinking you okay. wanted it in yeah. under number E3 where, it's, where the written right. report has to be yep. um, provided and, and I put, and the owner shall appear before yeah. the planning board. Yeah. And the owner. Is that, the actual, the true. Um, so the public hearing 
requirement. Like, um, I guess that's really just, it's not who's even. Who's the owner it. of um, the Sun's Mass? Well, we take other please. So, I'm not even sure if it's uh, Steve White, the CEO of the company. Yeah, he's never come, has he? Uh, he came the first year, yeah. maybe two years ago. Actually, there was a whole group yeah, that came, did. I think, the yeah, first year to do some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't have a, the public hearing requirement isn't really in this bylaw because it's part of your special permit procedures and I didn't, we didn't reiterate any of that here. Yeah. Right, by saying special permit, you're saying site plan because, I mean, you're saying public hearing because you have to have one. Right, first. yeah, but I'm just saying that, that. I think we should be required of all the businesses. <laughs> so, you know, now you're, now I you're want going. that Dollar General guy up here. Is that a guy? Or no, that's not. The thing is, that's we have seen. We haven't seen anybody. No, from no, Dollar that, and that's not the Dollar General. That's the, you know, it's. You a, keep it's saying Dollar least, General, but Dollar General has nothing company. to do with it. Yeah, they're just renters. They're just going to rent it if they're right. going to get built. Right, the Sutu there is the guy that we see. Lascotti. Lascotti, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they're going to do a Polynesian prince. <laughs> So are we okay with the reporting requirements? Mm -hmm. I just put that in. Yeah. So the next section is on issuance, transfer, discontinuance of use. The special permit goes is issued to the owner. It's issued for a specific type of establishment on a specific parcel. Mm -hmm. It's not transferable to another establishment or site. Has a limited term. Um, what do you mean by a limited term? Are you talking just the site I'm sorry, plan review? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. The term is limited to the duration of the yeah. applicant's ownership of the premises. Right. If they let it lapse, then it, then it okay. goes away. Is, there, is, that, is a year normal, if not, if not providing the operation of services? The state probably has other rules for that too, so I would. I'm sure worry that, about that. Yeah, that's true. Let's just say this again. What am I missing? Nothing. These, we're, I think we're just agreeing with okay. basically all of these. Okay. So if they stop operating, they have to remove all of their materials. So this is where that bond comes in. Oh, right. I, just I have a question. When we were talking about they're not transferable and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So this what if they get bought out? Right. Yeah, I it's think. It's not transferred. It's they bought that business. Especially if it's publicly held. Right. It's still the same business. Yep. I'd have to look at the CCC rules about that, but I would imagine they have to probably I mean, get, just, a, if it ever have gets to get legal, a new license at that Everything's going to be owned, owned by R.J. Reynolds anyway, so. Exactly. But we're saying that they would have to come come back to us. Right. Even if the state lets them transfer it or sell it. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I needed to number these pages. On Why would you... Well, you want to know something about that owner? So I'm going to say, well, you know, everything's going to be the same. Same people going to run it. Everything's the same. Everybody gives us a chance to just get the new names and numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't we want to retain that right? Mm -hmm. and make sure they understand the conditions of the special permit that was issued and so forth. Check on whether it's if it's bought out. If that maybe that's a different. And shall lapse expire. So maybe it's three if they're bought out by another party. <clears throat> I'm 
mean, it's like liquor licenses. If you if you change manager, you have to come to the select board or something, right? Mm-hmm. Change ownership. Ownership. I think ownership and uh, and even I thought the management. Even. I don't know if you go to the ABC or you go just to the select board. You have to go to It somewhere. depends. If there's a reason that the ownership wouldn't be able to hold a liquor license, then they might ask the manager to put it in their name. Mm. Right, that's how. So this, uh, a bond or other financial security acceptable to the treasurer in the amount set by the plan board, that would be tough for us to set an amount. I wonder if we can, um, can we come up with what that amount would be? It's, how would we? We yeah. we had to do that with the solar. Did we do that with the solar things? Or mm -hmm. is there some set set calculation? I don't know. Let me take a look at uh, at that and see if I can. I think we maybe there's some the, guidance we can put in there. Yeah. In the past with the solar, it was always just a negotiated thing. You know, the prices varied a lot. Right. The one on the, the quarry was a, big, was a significant chunk of money, I think. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, I think that's been sold three times since we approved it. <laughs> Which one? The solar array at... Uh, 901 River Road. Who, who, who's the main really? owner up there now? It's I have no idea. T and T. It's not LT Land or Land. Because the people from Chicago sold it right away. Um, oh. They sold it before they built it. <laughs> so the next section is on application requirements. This all seems so like. And it make, makes reference to your special permit section. I don't know if you want to call out the number in the bylaw for that. But these are sort of the additional requirements above and beyond what you already require under special permits. Yeah. Yep, that seems pretty crosswalked and fleshed out. Oh, because these relate directly to the state stuff, huh? But here again, this gets back to that definition. You know, it says, uh, you know, the planning board's authorized to approve special permits for marijuana establishments in an amount up to but not exceeding 20%. <clears throat> but if a cultivator you know, that can be, that number can exceed 20%. So is that not considered an establishment? That is the question that I was trying to think about here, too. Yeah, we got to go back to, because that 20% is really just about retail. Yeah, marijuana establishment includes, if you look at the definition, it includes a marijuana cultivator. Yeah, it's kind of the, the broader. Cooperative, product manufacturer, et cetera. So. Yeah, it does include cultivators. I think, the, I think that's two different sentences. Um, is it, and this is, um, maybe I'm just not reading right. It says, what I just read, that 20%, the number of licenses issued within the town for the retail sale of alcohol beverages not to be drunk on the premises. That's the definition of retail sale of alcoholic beverages. So you're excluding restaurants from that. Right. Yeah, it's just liquor stores. Right. Liquor stores. Just liquor yeah, stores. It's liquor stores, right. Well, we don't have 10 liquor stores. Actually, yeah, right, because this isn't even wine and beer. This is just liquor. How many liquor stores? Two, there's one. Yeah. Oh, the, no, I think there's no, no, four. Oh. Oh, but the funny. thing is, so now you get that, you get 20% of four, how, you know. It's one. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's a weird thing to base it on. <laughs> I think we want fewer pot smokers than drinkers. Like, or, or that's we, what we're we saying. We want 20%. That there are <laughs> fewer I don't know. I don't even understand how one but, thing is related to another at all. But I do think that that's something that came directly from the Cannabis Control Commission. Yeah, we didn't invent that. that we didn't no, invent that. that yeah. Oh, I don't think you guys did. I think they pulled I, I, it out of And I agree with you. I don't, it's, too. it's very arbitrary. <laughs> but but, but, but there, Chris, on that right. sentence, take out that whole middle about the 20% because the rest of the sentence makes sense. The planning Board is authorized to approve special permits for mm -hmm. marijuana establishments. The planning board is not, then you skip, skip down to the planning board is not obligated to approve an application that doesn't find any interest. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like two thoughts within that one sentence anyway. So it's a run on sentence, yeah, is what you're and saying. Yeah, take out that whole 20% of liquor licenses, and I, I think we'll, we'll still be fine. Okay. So say this again. Because it says that 20% is somewhere else, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, it, it's a repeat. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. And then it just confuses that whole thought process. I, I agree so with say you. it again, what, you, what are you recommending? We're going to take away this, the middle of the sentence. That dangling take clause, it out. the 20%. Yep. And okay. in, a, in, a, in an amount up to, but not exceeding 20%, blah, 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 blah. All the way up to laws. And then it start again, the planning board is not obligated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris, let me ask you about that sentence, too, where it says that the planning board is not obligated not to exceeding. approve not an application for the marijuana establishment that it doesn't find to be in the best interest of the town, which I kind of get that whole thing. So if we get somebody in here and uh, we, you know, we turn them down and somebody comes right behind them and we approve them and say, well, you, you like that, you approve this guy because he's better looking than the first one. You know what I mean? Talk about being subjective. Mm. Then we'd really but that's what special permits are. Special permits are so good. <laughs> I get it, but I just yeah. You can't you can't make a decision based upon you. You're right. You can't be discriminatory. Like way some, well, I know, but, but, but no, I was that was the applicant come back. So he said, well, why? You know, you yeah. turned me down, and now well, I want we, to do we, the exact we, same thing he wanted to do. We should have some reason, right? right. Yeah, you'd have so you'd that's have to. That's why we do decisions, and you write you know, them down. A threat to health and we security and welfare, or something fundamental like that. So the rest of this whole thing is all just lots of things out of the state or something? Or? Yeah, it seems like a pretty comprehensive list of all the things they got to do. Yeah. You know, signage, pedestrian, that's all normal stuff. Yeah. Odor control is a little new. What's the requirements of 935 CMR 500? Is that the CCC? Yes. Are you looking for this last? Yeah, I have it. Just... But it's set up to leaving the 20%. And, and no, 4 no. and 5 or, or no. 5 oh, and 6. That sounds or... weird. Not too up, but not exceeding. On the same line there. Oh. The planning board, 20%. This is the rest of it, that's not. The 20% is not there. I'm sorry, John, I don't know what you're Sorry, section. Oh, there you go. N. There you go. For establishments. Five and six are on the same. They just got, the six didn't go down to the next line. So, after establishment. Okay, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Security Perfect. and alarms. Oh, thank you. Oh, so here you talk about in seven. Decommission and including a cost estimate, taking into consideration the community's cost to undertake. So, so the so the company would have to give us a cost estimate of what it, decommissioning might cost, which might be a basis for the bond decision. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. that could be related to the bond. Yeah. I mean, they they might undercut it, but. So you have to make a series of findings, six findings. I realize we've got lettering problems in the findings here, but um, these are in addition to the 
the findings that you normally make as part of a special permit. I know I'm kind of going backwards, but <clears throat> what number is that? When it talks about energy efficiency, mm -hmm. so what is it? I wonder. Too far back. Yeah, let's put some green restrictions in here. Application requirements four six six six. See what you did there. All the way down number <laughs> M N. All by. N number five. Energy efficiency. Conservation. You yeah. started somewhere early? No, I'm just wondering <laughs> what's that supposed to mean. Oh, I see. I mean, I'm not. Just sits there. Well, it's in reference to the requirements the of the state regulations, which. Um, well, we just, I mean, we just went through something where we have. A grower that has to install 60,000 gallons of propane <laughs> to keep greenhouses, plastic buildings warm all winter long. I, you know, talk about submarines, global yeah, warming and stuff. Submarines. I mean, that's that's huge. I mean, yeah, you know, that that can replace, I don't know, quick math, maybe 12,000 cars. Wow, yeah, it's that's huge. Incredible. And, uh, I mean, yeah. it's hard enough to keep your house. It's insulated at 70 degrees, never mind a plastic building at right. 74 degrees. Right, wow. Well, my understanding was that was a form of backup and that it wasn't intended. No, it wasn't. Right. It wasn't the original plan. Right. To but run it's well, still continuously you, you heard in about burn. Else was three, three, three 8,000 gallon trucks a week. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. Do you, do you know if there's any, any energy efficiency like guidelines for? Because uh, that's, I guess, like you say, in the CCC, there must be some of them, but it's very vague, I'm sure. So it's yeah. Like, well, when and if there's someone who wants this, yeah. we make them explain it. Right. So is that something we can put? Go in the. Uh, so, so our normal special permit requirement is that it does um, the benefits of this would outweigh the detriments to the town. So here we're kind of almost saying that that's that's too high of a bar for them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we need to, you know, it's a special permit. That's what it is. The benefits need yeah. to be more. So they usually talk about jobs. That's how most of these guys are talking. Right. Oh, it's right. going to bring 50 jobs to your community. Right. So when you say the economic development and the taxes, there's a benefit. Um, that's, yeah, it's certainly true. But you're right. If they're polluting the environment, then that's that's a detriment. Um, so. So those those findings that you make under your existing special permit process would would be made for this. Uh, Type of use as well, and then you have these six new ones that you would add into the mix. Which are, some of them are similar, I guess. They'll probably change the rules and allow them to grow more pot because if they do away with fossil fuels, they'll have to burn the pot to keep it warm. <laughs> I was thinking we could also make them homeless shelters because, man, that'd be a great dual use. Keep yeah. people warm in the winter and high. <laughs> Free labor. Great. Yeah, but the state would screw it up and tell me you had to buy insurance for or something like that. <laughs> I'd become homeless. <laughs> um, wow. All right. So we've got to the end. So that's why. Yeah. So that happened. That's so so that's let's, get, let's get back to the beginning. Are you going to take our existing one and try to see how we can? Yeah. I'm going to. I mean, I think this is. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to suggest that you use this to replace all of your existing, but yeah. I'm going to go back through your existing one and kind of cross compare and see if there's anything yeah. that seems work on too. really important. Um, but I think that plug table. Here. I think the table is something that you know we really need to think strongly about as to where we place it. Stuff yeah. that I think that's the biggest decision you have to make. Right? Yeah. And then I suggest the next meeting we bring the map out and look at. <laughs> 
yeah. is there another yeah. potential oh, place it's like there. no but I'm saying with, yes. when we get the other three people here too to really look at them right you know are we are we too tight right now are we fine right now because taking away residential agriculture yeah takes away most of the time <laughs> um, that's right so the way to again the way to compensate oh. for that is to use your entire industrial district instead of just the marijuana overlay let, as well that's let, what we'd have to look at what you, where where is industrial where is and that, even yeah. c2 but uh, let me throw something out i was looking what waitley does they here like deerfield they have a large ra district mm. so there you have their town's broken up into two ra districts ra1 and ra2 uh. everything is near any road is RA1. Anything that is 400 feet beyond a road is RA2. Mm. And they only allow mar marijuana growers in the RA2 district. So you can't have anything within 400 feet of a road, which most houses are within 400 right. feet of the road. Mm. So it would be fields out back and stuff like that. Mm. That's something to think that's about. Yeah. yeah. That's a bigger. I, I don't know, just that could be opening up. I was reading that and I was like, wow. But personally, I like this better. Yeah. I think, it, you know, if it's in an existing industrial building, you know, that's the ideal spot for right. something like that. And you have those kind of structures available. We don't. I mean, Deerfield doesn't. Yeah. Well, you have some. And those might change over. The too. only industrial is already our, our overlay district, is the only industrial buildings that we have vacant in this town. I know. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's but that we already got one going in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. it's like um, you know Turner's and Athol. Those old big mill bills. Those are good uses. Maybe if they, yeah. they, they, but they which they actually Athol is getting a big one there. Yeah. I mean, if someone took over Strathmore and would propose to do this, they would probably sell it to them in a second. Oh, well, yeah. Holyoke is the same way. There's right. A, there's a lot of stuff going on in Holyoke. Did you hear the one that already went bankrupt? No, I didn't. Yeah, there was one in an old mill. Huh. And um, they got, I don't know, several million from investors and already um, went through it. They said it's, they went through it and they, they wow. can't keep going. And so they wow. had to file bankruptcy. What was it? In, in a, a, I think it was cultivation and processing in Holyoke. Hmm. It was in one of the old mills. They went bankrupt. So we don't also separate, because um, we had a little discussion about this earlier on, about craft marijuana cultivator. Because we're like, we like small businesses, so is, can, can we give them an advantage over the bigger ones? But now I don't know if the, I don't know if any, if that's even happening. Because uh, the idea yeah. was that, you know, like craft breweries, you know, you could have small yeah, ones. Well, that you could they create have a much impact on the town and stuff, but I don't think anybody, financially they don't make sense, I don't think. I don't think so, because I think that the whole permitting process is so uh, expensive. Cumbersome. I know yeah. that early on the state was really big on making the permitting process fair. So, uh, you know, women, minorities, people of color, yep. you know, everybody could yeah. be included. But the, the bottom line is that through their so own, much money. Yeah, you have to have so much money. It, it just prohibits, you know, the guy. And, and it's a huge investment. Even if you got a group of people together and you know they all were going to pitch in you know fifty thousand dollars they're all thinking well this is a you know a big risky mm -hmm. thing you know so can i just ask you quickly in, in uh, attorney evans thing here did, where did it talk about processing uh, as being permissible in our uh, you you mean you mean manufacturing or pro <coughs> manufacturing? Uh, manufacturing, sir. Um, well, John, I think I don't really know, but my assumption is that's exactly why this language in the beginning was kind of all, um, it's, a, it's, uh, sure it's a clever way of putting it all in there. So, you know, oh yeah, we get this and then it's through. Oh, here it is. In the table, marijuana yeah. product preparation right. is a special permit in our. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. that's that's so he wanted to add that. Right. That's the key. So I knew he didn't write this sure. unless that was going to be in there. Right. You, you saw that. 
Yeah, I did. I, yeah. And you didn't take that into this? I didn't. Oh, okay. I, I went with the uh, recommendation of the, Boy. the team of folks that yeah. oh, studied the, this, and they suggest not doing it in the RA. Right. So that's, you know, we told Dick this 12 times at least, so he shouldn't be surprised, but just so you know that. Nothing against him. <laughs> so it sounds like we need at least one more meeting on this. Um, I'm wondering um, also if at the next meeting we could talk a little bit about the floodplain um, bylaw and make sure we kind of get, get that ready for town meeting. Yeah, we're ready to finalize. I think that's yeah. pretty close. We've had public hearings on it. We had a public hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was as you, you actually voted to send it to town meeting. That's what I thought. It, then it didn't happen. Um, so we just got to update that vote or something? Yeah, you're going to have to do another public, another public hearing. hearing right? oh. Because it, it's lapsed at this point, so. Mm -hmm. So, but now if we're talking, maybe we can do that. Well, we want to be, we don't want to, like we should right. Right, time it out so that it's ready for town meeting in if we could April, do, right? It's not, I mean, so if we, we could that one in it February before. and then this one in, Mar in March and then they'd be both be ready for town meeting. Well, you know, well, uh, so it have to be done at, yeah, so annual town it. meeting is the only place you can do bylaws. Yeah, and we want is to that, do it that Is that your days? rule? Because that's not a, that's not the state's rule. It's not? To change bylaws? Yeah, you can do it. You can have a special town meeting for oh, bylaws. Oh, sorry, a town meeting. A okay. full town meeting, though, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we try to do it on annual because our special town meetings are 10 people come and it's like a, right. it's not, they have I don't to be think so very, highly it's not a very democratic system. Oh, right there, right? I see. Yeah. Certainly anything with marijuana. Yeah. The other one. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Smaller group, but this would definitely be at an annual town meeting. So February for a public <coughs> hearing on floodplain and um, when does the warrant close? Do you know? I don't well, know if they've even put a date. Have they put a date? That I don't know. But no, it's, but they, they, they keep it open, open and close it. So. Yeah, they, that's open pretty late. We just want to make sure we don't miss it again. Uh, <laughs> right. But if we, uh, so in January, if we did what we need to do on the flood plan, had the public hearing in February. Yeah. And then in January and February, did the marijuana thing, public hearing in March, that, that should be fine. Okay. So, yeah, so I think the next meeting, let's go back over this, looking at how it compares to our current one. You are. Yeah. And then look at the map. That would be a big part of that next meeting. Yeah. And do you guys have a, a big zoning map somewhere? Yeah, we have one right on the wall. We could probably bring it but over. But that's out of date, isn't it? Uh, John, you know what, I, what you just said? I, I'd like to make sure that we have it all finalized before our public hearing. So right. we're not in no, getting it to more. You have, to, right, right, right. you have to propose. Right. And no, so right. we would have to know why we right. are, exactly. are proposing these. Exactly. But this, you know, I don't, there's not a lot of differences. Uh, no. If anything, no. we're just no. tightening it up, and I think most of our residents want us to. I, I think so, too. And, and I, I actually do like this. Some of these, and, you know. I know. I, I want to see, like, commercial, too. Like, why not make make things there? Because it doesn't smell. It doesn't, you know, it's just like making something. Mm -hmm. So maybe we do make it in C2. That that is... Well, you know, because there's jobs, there's income, you know, that has some we of the benefits the to the town. Right, and like Without in terms of like the low processing, like I know that some of the um, places sell like um, like joints. So somebody has to roll those joints in yeah. order for them to sell them, yeah. right? Yeah. I would imagine someone has yeah. to put the weed into a little thing, right? Yeah. That's a part of a process. Someone has to put it in a jar, somebody else has to put the stuff in the thing, and that's a process. <laughs> I don't know anything about Well, then that. it gets, yeah, what's the primary processing versus the next set level processing? Yeah. But, I mean, if you're not cooking it or baking it or, you know, using vats or, you know, tubes, that's what, I I mean, I know the, it's getting kind of late in the evening, but I'm sort of like, well, what is the difference? Like, if you're not heating it, if you're not progressing it in some sort of chemical or physical way, if you are really just rolling it or sticking it in a tube or something like that like but how can you i think there's semantically what's the difference but semantically what's the difference right but i don't think we can separate the difference it's it's product manufacturing and we don't shouldn't really care whether it's rolling a joint or making a gummy bear out of it doesn't it right but there's well i no i think there is a big difference between no i'm saying in the definition of product of manufacturing that's what i'm wondering i, I think i 
it's just one. I, I understand what she's saying, but the, the problem was there is a difference, but I, I don't think that it would uh, do any applicant any good to say, okay, we're going to allow manufacturing, but our definition of manufacturing is you put the weed in the paper and you roll up. That's it. Now, if you want to make gummy bears, that's a different type of manufacturing. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think that's, that's where it gets. I mean, I understand the difference, but I think we'd have a hard time describing the two. So I guess the context that I was thinking of it is, in, is what you're saying about Waitley. <clears throat> so if they wanted the joint, joint rolling t type of processing yeah. in a residential area like that, that doesn't increase the noise or the noise the noise yeah. or the smell or anything else impactful like that so i guess i would consider that the a much lower impact sort of processing whereas making a gummy bear or making a bar of soap or heating something or creating more noise or making more smell making more odor would be another level of manufacturing for me if it's quiet it doesn't make any more noise it doesn't use up any more um resources then I guess I could see it parked in a more residential agricultural neighborhood than something that is impactful. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we continue? I say yes. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's not get into the other things, let's schedule the next meeting. Correct. I actually have one other thing. So I have to write up, <laughs> we have to, but I will assume responsibility. Um, the official decision for 198 Mill Village Road, actually, um, hasn't been properly signed and sealed. So I've got two documents that the guy, Alex, was he the intern mm -hmm. remember that mm -hmm. the, was at the last meeting yeah so um i talked to diana the other day so we got to take the minutes and the decision and kind of make them into one document which the minutes kind of are the conditions so i'll try to get that done over the next couple and then um so that's a special permit uh site plan review site plan review so i don't know if i need anybody's your just if if we get that done, then can I sign it? I mean, we already voted on it back yep. on October. October what? Seventh. Really? Just on the seventh? Last year. All right. Maybe just the seventh. That's not that old. All right. January sixth for our next meeting. January sixth. Got it. Seven o'clock. All right, Chris, that works for you? Uh, I think so. First I Monday of January. Bring my 2020 calendar back. <laughs> I, I know. I can't believe 2020. God, I guess we don't like. Anything else that we have not anticipated? And, and so on that agenda, we'll have this marijuana and the flood, flood plane. And just so I did get information, like I say, that there is a new, um, someone's in the zoning office there, a uh, full-time position, I understand. Mm -hmm. Her name is Sue. I believe had some experience and... Where is she working? In uh, like, kind of like Priscilla's, oh, it's that position, but it's a oh, little... Oh, there yesterday? It's, there's it's no a way little... Way. Um, Friday, there's no way there. A little more, it's a little more than what Priscilla did apparently because it's full-time. She went full-time. <laughs> so that's some news, so okay. maybe we'll try to get her to come to the next meeting if we can. All right. I have a motion to dissolve. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Success. Nine o'clock. Thank you all. Thanks, Chris.